Oh, why, right, ladies and gentlemen of the U2 citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, Dad's Drew and Fun-O. <laughs> and yes, it's another throwback tunes on another Thursday. And this one was actually requested by Tupac Soldier. So shout out to Tupac Soldier. And the album he requested is the Don Killuminati album, The Seven Day Theory. As I said, I'm on Killuminati. There we go. So it was also shown as The Seven Day Theory or Machiavelli. Um, because this one was released by Tupac under his new stage name, Machiavelli. And. Even though the and, and here's a little bit of background info with this album, real quick. The album, and then I want this to sink in your heads, real quick. The album came out November 5th, 1996. It came out under Death Row and Inter, um, Interscope Records, but Tupac completed the entire album in one week. I crap you not. From August 1st up to August 7th, same year, 1996. He worked on his album, he wrote the lyrics, he performed it, and it was mixed up all in seven days. And unfortunately, this is Tupac's or Machiavelli's final studio album when he was alive. So obviously this album was released after he died, because he died September 7, 1996. And originally it was supposed to come out March 1997, but producer Sug Knight released it four months earlier. And a little bit more background info. The lyrics were written and recorded in only three days, and the mixing took an additional four days. And I'm gonna tell you how this was amazing in a minute. Um, but going to the charts, the album peaked at number one on the Billboard 200, selling 664,000 copies within its first week. The album was a certified three times platinum in April 1997, and then four times platinum on June 15, 1999. And here's the producers. Obviously, you got Machiavelli, a.k.a. Tupac, who was an executive producer. Simon, who was an executive producer. I'm assuming that's, uh, is that supposed to be Suge Knight? Yes, it is. So, Simon, a.k.a. Suge Knight. Then we got the regular producers, Daryl Big D Harper, Hurt M. Bad, Demetrius Ship, Reggie Moore, and QD3. And I'm pretty sure there was more producers than that. Let me see. I said Reggie Moore. Actually, no, that's it. Okay, cool. So, yeah, there you go with that. And the entire album, the entire thing was done in Can Am Studios out in LA. So, and there was only three singles, but we get more on that in a minute. And let's see. Any more info about this album? And I have to say, no. But at the same time, this was when during the time where Tupac, he was constantly growing shots at just about everybody. So we talking, um, matter of fact, he did, uh, he was growing shots of people in his album and this was during the height of the East Coast, West Coast rivalry. So he was going shots at Biggie, Junior Mafia, who was under Biggie, Pup Daddy, who was associated with Biggie, De La Soul, that's new to me, Jay-Z, Mob Deep, Nas, and even Dr. Dre. Yes. So at that, at that point, Dr. Dre had left Death Row. And he also grew shots at New York-based hip-hop executive, executives, rather, Jimmy Henchman Rosemond, Drakees, uh, what's his name? Hay- Hayton Jack, Agnet, how you pronounce his last name, and Walter King Tut Johnson, with accusations of being associates of Pub Daddy and Bad Boy Records. And orchestrated the 1994 Cross Studio Assault. This is where uh, Tupac got shot. I think he got shot in the head and still survived and something like that. And although Sakura insulted Nas on the first track, and again on Against All Odds, rapper Young Noble, who appeared on several songs on this album, stated in an interview that the Nas song "I Gave You Power." Served as a main inspiration for Sakura's Me and My Girlfriend song, which was later used by Jay-Z and Beyonce, as you all should know. And Tupac and Nas eventually scratched the beef at the 1996 MTV Video Music Awards, and this was days before Tupac was murdered. And they were supposed to meet up in Vegas, but they never got the chance to, unfortunately. And it was funny because 
death row associate Kurt Cobain revealed in an interview in 2016 that Tupac was listening to It Was Written, which was obviously done by Nas, the day he got shot on his way to Vegas. Now, on to this album, there are a grand total of 12 tracks. No, no skits or anything like that, but I can only give you a top three and not a top five. So, let's get straight into it. The first track gets called, and I mentioned this already, this was one of the ones we were going to shot at a lot of people. And this one's called Bomb First, and in parentheses, my second reply. This one features EDI and Young Noble. The second track, a lot of you should know this one, and it's called Hail Mary, featuring the Outlaws and Prince Ital Joe. The third track is another single. This one's called Toss It Up, featuring Danny Boy, Aaron Hall, KC, and JoJo. The fourth track is another single, To Live and Die in L.A., featuring Val Young, followed by the fifth song, which is called Blasphemy, followed by Life and, uh, Life and the Outlaw, featuring the Outlaws, obviously. The next track is called Just Like Daddy, featuring the Outlaws. Track number eight is called Crazy with a K, featuring Badass with two Zs. Track number nine is called Right Man's, with a Z, not an S, Right Man's World, featuring Big D and... Alinati, yeah, Alinati. Track number 10 is the Me and My Girlfriend song, followed by Hold Your Head Up. I mean, Hold Your Head, excuse me, featuring Tyrone Rice, W R I C E. And the last track is called Against All Odds. So, yeah, let's get on with the three singles. Now, the first single, as I'm looking this stuff up real quick, the first single that actually dropped was Toss It Up. So this one came out September 26, 1996, and it came out just under two weeks after he died. Now, and here's the crazy thing about this single. There are three different versions of this song. The first, um, there's the album version, the radio cut, and the video versions. Now, the song contained a diss to Drake, questioning his sexuality and calling him gay. And it contains samples from No Diggity, which is ironic since both songs came out close to each other. And this song only peaked in the R&B singles chart at number 34. So his and this song apparently have a little bit of some controversy. So after hearing No Diggity, which features Dr. Dre for the first time, several of Dr. Dre's former Death Row colleagues, including Machiavelli, aka Tupac, recorded and attempted to release the song containing numerous insults aimed at Dr. Dre and using a deliberately similar instrumental to No Diggity, but were forced to replace the production at the Backstreet issued the label with a cease and desist order, stopping them from distributing the song. He also made an indirect reference to the song Straight Outta Compton of Dr. Dre's former rap group, NWA. On the outro of the song, Pub Daddy and Little Kid were, were this. In that point, Tupac also responds to what Puff Daddy said about him in an interview. Now, aside from 30 places 34 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100, it was also 24th in the Australia charts, third in the New Zealand charts, fourth in the U.K. R&B charts, and 15th on the U.K. Singles charts. And it was gold out in New Zealand. Now, the second single, which ironically enough came out the same day, is called To Live and Die in L.A. And the album version of this song contained a Dr. Dre this at the end of it. <laughs> the clean version had altered lyrics and is longer. So, yeah, that's pretty crazy right there. And the song sampled Prince, um, Do Me Baby. And apparently Tupac was a big Prince fan. But not much said about Dr. Dre. Aside from the fact that he threw shots at Dre at the end of this song. And regarding this song, making it to the charts, it was number 82 out in the Netherlands and number 9 in New Zealand. New Zealand, rather, and number 10 in the UK. Now, the third and final single off of this album, and we all should know what it is, Hail Mary, obviously. This one came out February 11, 1997. And no, there was no controversy or anything like that. However, the song captures Machiavelli zoning out, I mean, yeah, zoning out the violence and negativity surrounding him, praying to God, and making biblical references. 
And of course, there was a remix of the song, which was featured on the album New Mix Classic, All of That and Slang, and that came out in 2003. Now, this song was 43rd in the UK singles charts, 8th in the US Billboard Hot Rap Singles, and 12th in the US Billboard Hot R&B Singles. And I'm thinking about it, and I'm looking at everybody who was in this song, Castro, Young Noble, and Yaki Kadafi of the Outlaws, and Prince Ada Joe. Unless Prince was an R&B singer, I don't recall this being an R&B song. In fact, if you look at the genre, it's um, gangster rap and horrorcore. And I'm like, how? So the fact that it made an R&B chart is very, very weird, in my opinion. And also, this is one of Tupac's most favorite, not favorite, but famous songs. And yeah, there you go with that. So now let me get on with my favorite tracks from the bottom on up. And actually, before I do that, let me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's go on with my favorite tracks from the bottom on up. With the fuck. And again, none, I'm not saying these tracks suck or anything like that. But we start from the worst, going up to the best, obviously. So, believe it or not, the intro. Bomb first, my second reply. Next up is To Live and Die in LA, followed by Crazy. Then we got me and my girlfriend, followed by Hold, hold Your Head. I keep saying, I keep wanting to say Hold Your Head up. But anywho, it's Hold Your Head. Then we got Against All Eyes, followed by Toss It Up, and then of course Hail Mary. And the fourth best track off this album is Life of an Outlaw. The third best track off this album is Blast Me. And it's mostly because the beat is nice. Uh, beat is nice, rather. It's a little bit unique. But it's still pretty dope. I have to, you know, if I do say so myself. So, Blasphemy, again, is a really dope track. Now, the second best track off this album is Right Man's World. And this joint is smooth, man. Like, this is one of the joints you should be um, banging your car. It's really that smooth, man. So, you know, you cannot sleep on that album. I mean, not that album, but on that song, rather. Because it's smooth, but if you want to talk about songs off this album that really smooth, then number one, the best track off this album, just like Daddy. That joint was really smooth, and really that's all I can say. Yeah, the, I mean, I was never really a big fan of the Outlaws, but the Outlaws didn't. And I mentioned on the old Tupac album that I did that the Outlaws hurt one of the songs, but they did nothing wrong with this one. Nothing, absolutely, positively nothing. It was still dope as heck. So, yeah. Um, the best track off of this album, Just Like Daddy. So, yeah. There you go with that. Now, let me give y'all some professional ratings real quick. And here we go. All Music gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. Entertainment Weekly gave it a D. I thought that was a D- minus for a second. I'm a little bit tired, but no, that's a D. LA Times gave it 3 out of 4 stars. MV Remix Reviews gave it 9 out of 10. Rap Reviews gave it 7.5 out of 10. Rolling Stone gave it 3 out of 5. Sputnik Music gave it 5 out of 5 stars, that is. As did XXL and Music, M-U-Z-I-K. The last two gave it 5 out of 5 stars. So, what do I think about this album? Now, let me break this down for you real quick. Of all the albums that I heard, done by Tupac, I heard... Me Against the World, All Eyes on, All Eyes on Me, and The Seven Eight Theory. The last three albums he did a lot. I have not heard his first two albums yet. I also heard Until the End of Time, which was, well, I actually got that one. That was a double disc. And would I say that The Seven Eight Theory was his best album? No, I, I still have to go with Me Against the World so far. But at the same time, um, 7 8 Theory did place number one on the U.S. charts, U.S. R.B. charts, 37 out in Australia, 25th in Canada, 76th in Germany, 61st out in the Netherlands, 17th in New Zealand, and in the U.K., 53rd. Now, I already mentioned it went, it's currently four times platinum, selling over 5 million copies. So really, it's kind of close to being diamond. Uh, as far as the BPI, it is a silver, while MC consider it to be a gold. But as far as what I what do I think about this album, I would have to honestly say, even though it's a good album, there's nothing really special about it aside from that Hail Mary single. And um 
the uh, just like daddy rights uh, right man's world and blasphemy and even life of an outlaw was good and of course you know toss it up was good as well his uh another one of his singles but uh i would have to give this one a 3.5 out of 5 i recommend you download it and you keep it yeah i'm gonna go that far download it and keep it uh i would recommend download it keep it uh if you on the fence there yeah, you can download this to yourself and then you can decide from there but for me this gets a 3.5 out of 5 i recommend that you download it and keep it so yeah there you go with that now let's get on to what's going to go on next week now voting is back unless somebody well yeah voting is back and we're going to give our losers a second chance so we're going to consider this when this point going forward unless uh, a new category comes up second chance voting so these are uh, nominees that were brought up before but wasn't voted by you guys so i give them another chance so the four albums available are money power and respect by the locks purple haze by cameron actually i think yeah this is the third time this one was uh nominated right here train of thought by reflection internal and anarchy by buster rhyme so here we go money power and respect by the locks purple haze by cameron train of thought by reflection internal and anarchy by buster rhymes again you can vote on facebook if you're either um a friend of mine on facebook or part of one of three groups you can vote from there or you can vote on my twitter account the link to that will be in the description box below so yeah and of course if you have any other albums that you want me to review leave it in the comment section and even though i won't do it next week but the week after i will so best believe i have not shafted anybody or uh ignore anybody request anytime anybody made a request i have done it like like two weeks in advance i have done it so yeah there you go with that man y'all know who this is this is the new jay gatsby aka the new Stephen a smith saying peace out y'all and i'll see y'all next time yeah